And, and just as we uh, close this uh, KIPAC at 20 celebration, and I would like to invite um, not just our current director, but some of our former directors up to the stage to say a few words. So um, Roger, as um, KIPAC's founding director and serving in that role until 2013, um, I wonder if you could um, share some of your thoughts with us. Okay, uh, well, first is, I, I apologize for missing the first two days, but it's been great being here these two days, and I did catch up on some of the uh, discussions we had. It's been a wonderful meeting, and uh, I was part of the science organizing committee, and I was, uh, uh, I participated just about enough to see who was actually doing the work. And so, um, uh, and I, I would like to call out, I'm sure others will do this too, Dan Wilkins, who led it, has put an enormous amount of effort into this, and Risa, of course, uh, and Andrea Davis and uh, Martha uh, Siegel and all, all of the other people who've helped. And I think it's been a tremendous effort. It's been a very exciting event. And it's been so positive and so uh, uh, inspiring to see old friends and people and make new friends here just over these two days. So uh, that's great. And thank you very much. Can we have a round of applause? It's been a huge amount of work, and it hasn't just over a long period of time. And so that's that's great. Um, the uh, uh, other other things I'd say is that uh, I've been sort of thinking what 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 to say here, and I'm not quite sure whether this is totally appropriate. Uh, but uh, uh, Kaipak, in many ways, over the twenty years, has not changed. It is very much a forward-looking, highly interactive. Um, young organization in which the emphasis is on youth um and it is one uh that i've worked in a few different places and i've reviewed a large number of other institutions and one thing which it sounds pretty to say it it's a happy place and i, I and I, I it sounds sort of almost trite but don't take that for granted it's not most places are not like that uh so Let's keep it that way. So that's great. And that's come across very clearly in these presentations um, that we've heard here today. The, um, I'd, uh, I've written on a few sort of more, sort of slightly more philosophical, if you like, ways about reactions to what I've heard and what, what I've seen in KIPAC and ways in which it could change. And I say this in the spirit, um, not of some a uh, grumpy old Jeremiah. Remember, the one thing that has changed is I have gotten older, and you lot collectively may not, but I have. And so, and I'm maybe projecting inappropriate attitudes from the past, but um, I'll do it anyway. That's what aging grumpy Jeremiahs do. Um, and uh, and I was just going to show a few slides from. A presentation, well, one of the few presentations I made, not here, but in other places, um, with just a few thoughts. And these are in the spirit of where KIPAC goes next, because KIPAC has changed. It has changed significantly from what it was 20 years ago, and it has changed in very positive ways under the wise and energetic direction, firstly of my successors, Tom A. Bell, and then Risa Wexler, who are doing a fab done a fabulous job. And I, I think, can we, without embarrassing them, can we at least give a round of applause for what they have done? And we love you both, and we want to go build on what you have accomplished so far, and so it's in, and it's not my choice. I'm not saying do this, do that. I'm the old geezer. So you, but at least I would like to, if I can, put a few ideas and reflections on the table. And I'm going to do this in the spirit, not so much of as Steve Stryfer. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, said of particle astrophysics and cosmology, but in the spirit of what when I came, it was a sort of what broader vision of and it's astrophysics writ large and and i do this in this perspective of opportunities in 
the larger world of astronomy that might be reflected in certain parts of the program. And I'm, I'm just going to say a few things along those lines. Um, and uh, so, there we go. Okay, all right. Yeah, so, um, and, and, and when Steve Kahn and I came here, we were very conscious of cultural differences, and I think they still exist. And their physics and astronomy, this is not an oppositional thing. It is a, a need to synthesize and get the best out of both worlds in this context. And this is a serious oversimplification, but we're talking maybe about an emphasis on inductive versus deductive science um, and on sort of contextual uh, versus sort of reductionist views of how to do physics and so on. And I think the center of gravity, if you like, of the methodology has moved towards the reductionist. Uh, there's big and small science. In particle physics, famously, you get your answers out of big, big facilities, not out of tandem van der Graaffs. And you, but in astronomy, as in other physics, there's a dynamic range and make choices have to be made all the way through in what you what people do in their own research programs, the big facilities and the small facilities that you go into and finding the sort of correct mix of small and large is a real challenge. And it's one that I think we have to we have to do it doing Kaipak. And so uh, and then um, the there's a difference in physics between and astronomy between experiments and observations. And experiments, you, it's a sort of almost ca Calvinist view of science. You put in the, you try and get the answer to a well-framed question. You're prepared to make, prepared to learn something from this. Whereas observations in the sort of extreme astronomical view is you just point the telescope and see what you find. And obviously we're trying to synthesize those two approaches, but let's get the center of gravity right. Now, um, just like to say something about theory here. It isn't just a measure of observations. In the history of this business, theorists have often been way ahead of the observational validation. And here's just a list. You could, you could, you know, I'm prepared to defend every one of these, but in, in some sense, the theory had been there making the, and that's very important for framing this and thinking about how we go forward. I'm not going to list all of these. I'm not going to discuss all of these or anything like that. Um, and oh, we didn't, that's right. uh, okay. And then the other thing, and this came up in the last session a lot, is that uh, you know uh, the phrase which is very new. It's all 20 year, 23 years old because I was present at inception, which is multi messenger astronomy or multi wavelength astronomy, and so on. You've got 140 octaves of spectrum to examine. It isn't just your one octave of, op of an optical telescope. It's all out there, and all of this is dis delivering discovery. And so you go all the way through. I'm not, again, you know what this is, uh, what this is. I'm not going to explain all this to you, but there are the three other messengers, and, um, and all of that is part of the mix and part of the way to understanding the universe. It's not just one approach. People have said this already, but that's there it goes. Um, now where? Okay. Now I want to use one um, uh, phrase that I took from a book that I read as a student by Peter Meadower, and he said, "Scientific discovery is logically unscripted." And I think that's very true. And this was. A long time ago, I made this sort of list. These were, in some sense, in the astrophysics and cosmology business. These were big discoveries. And this, you know, I can have, we can have some historical discussion, but in most cases, people who made them were looking for something else, were doing something else. Now, you can say, and I won't, I won't be rude to physicists, but I'll be rude to astronomers. This indicates that astronomers haven't a clue what they're doing. Um, and that is certainly one thing that you can deduce from this if you like. But I would say one thing in the defense of the astronomers is as a community, they were awfully good at smelling this doesn't fit. I'll follow it up and finding out what lay behind the discrepancy. 
And I think as a community, they have been extraordinarily good at that. And these, are, this is just a list. I can make it longer or short if you want, but that, that's the point I wanted to make. Scientific discovery is logically unscripted. And so I'm not sure what the next slide says. Um, okay, and, and, and just to show some... Okay, and, and this is another exercise I went into, and it's just to give the range of scientific discovery at the big field, in the, in the big picture. This was just nine years ago. It was some exercise I went in nine years ago. I picked out what I thought were in a six month period, what were the, the hot topics, the big things, the things that people were talking about over coffee, et cetera. And this is a list. And my point is not to go through, through this or anything like that, but to say almost all of these were durable. There was something behind it. It wasn't quite what people were saying at the time, but there was something there. And it was a, it was a big deal. Um, and there were, in addition, there were many changes, obviously, in research direction since then. But this is still ongoing. And to me, I never expected as a student, and many students here, I never expected that the pace of astronomical, astrophysical, cosmological discovery would continue. There were clearly things going on when I was a student, but I never expected it to go up. OK, all right, there we go. So, and, and, and there's no sign of it slowing down. And... Okay, so now let me just just say if I was going to go back from that. Okay, so 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 what what I guess what I'm set, trying to say here, looking towards the future, and it's your choice. I emphasise not mine, but was worth thinking about. Is how um, is which fields over you know in twenty twenty in, in in the thirty and forty year celebrations, which fields will be the ones that will be prominent? And I'm going to make a little bit of a case that you think less about surveys, less about machine learning, and more about understanding the individual sources, deconstructing what's going on. One hears an awful lot, and I understand where it's coming from, trying to measure uh, numbers, and then you make subgrid models of things so you can put in so you've got a better value of the time dependence of omega w or something like that. And it's all good and it's all right and it's all fine. But those sub, that subgrid modeling is itself very interesting. We can see galaxies as featureless points that are going to be in some survey and you use for science. Great, that's all great. But the galaxies themselves are interesting and everyone is different. When you look at do galaxy surveys, you're really doing sociology, not particle physics. They're not all the same. They're all totally different. And that's interesting. Telling the narrative history of the universe is every bit as interesting to the general public as getting some number and saying there's dark energy is not quite what we thought it was, scientists are puzzled. It's telling the story, the, the paleontological story is every bit as interesting. And think, just think about that as you plan your futures, your individual research futures, and collectively within Kaipak. And I'll finish with, this is my last point, and it's the future of astrophysicists is what I called it. And Ed Young brought this up, others brought it up here too. It's on the back of most of our minds. For me, it's been a concern and a, I wouldn't say a fixation, but something I've been following, if you like, and you know, engaged in since I was a student as well, which is, uh, the influence of uh, uh, energy problems and climate and so on uh, on on the planet, and the the planet is my backyard. Okay, it's a global issue. And why am I saying this here at Kaipat? Because I'm curious about where the scientists who are going to be called upon to. Um, technologists and engineers and so on are uh, to address the big problems, which I think everyone here will agree are out there and pressing and they're happening, coming to a head faster than pessimists warn. Where are they going to come from? And, co and astrophysics and cosmology, at least as traditionally taught, is a pretty good preparation for a lot of these issues. A lot of the things that you at least used to be taught, maybe less so, 
are there, should be there. And for the young people here, for the scientists, they, um, for young people and the grad students and postdocs and so on, you may well be the people, like everyone's been watching Oppenheimer or whatever. It's that sort of moment and that sort of scale that may well be needed because the policy makers and the administrators and so on have not done this very, very well and, and science. And so I would say two things that are corollaries of that. One is broaden your own personal experience, broaden your own understanding of science, understand what other people are doing, and you'll find that knowing a little bit of radiative transfer for a, a cool star might actually be relevant for our cool atmosphere, and so on and so forth. So, and this, and in some sense, you're in much better shape in, in KIPAC and in the community we represent to do that. And the, and the second thing is, I actually believe that the um, community, that the personal interactions over uh, Zoom and are not anything like those that are in person. So some of you came here from great distance, and we appreciate that. And take the opportunity to meet in whatever ways with people, other scientists of your generation around the world. This is a global problem, require a global solution and having people who know each other makes a huge difference rather than just some, some sort of abstract uh, personage on, 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 on a screen. So I would say do those two things and think very much. There are, I personally believe, I could be horribly wrong, but I personally believe there are going to be enormous employment opportunities, but not just a job to make a big difference. And, and the training in, uh, in astrophysics and cosmology is actually, coincidentally, a good way to start. So uh, on those um, uh, ponderous, but basically very optimistic notes, and congratulatory notes to all of you for a wonderful presentation and all the things that KIPAC has achieved. I will ye yield the floor to my esteemed colleague, Tom Abel. Hey, thank you, Roger. I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for those inspiring words and for everything that you've done and you still do to make KIPAC the, the place it is. So uh, let's thank Roger again.